All right, Ellis Cinema back. Another dish. How we doing out there? Good, great, gray yand, day yand. Wonderful. So, I've actually been sitting on this one for quite a while. Quite a while. I'll get into that here in a second, but man, I thought I was walking away from this show. I really, I really did. And not for any other reason other than to just, you know, pursue my own writing, pursue my own filmmaking, pursue other things that travel, that sort of thing. But, you know, I see those listens and I see those downloads and I, and I, the DMs and you make it very hard. (laughs) You make it very hard. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. As far as the video, you, all you guys wanting me to do more videos, listen, this was never meant, this show was never meant to be something that you watch. It was meant for you to listen to it on the way to work, have a laugh or two, maybe get excited about whatever piece of art I am talking about and and using my very, very, very small platform to promote. Uh, But I I thought the interviews would be good enough. If I did, uh, you know, interviews on video, then, you know, maybe you guys would back off. You don't. (laughs) You don't back off. You need to do more videos. Listen. I don't know if I'm going to do TikToks or anything like that. Maybe I'll go down the road of, uh, you know, uh, doing more YouTube videos. But, again, it was never meant to be that way. It was meant to get you fired up about film again. That's why I started this whole damn show. Get get back into long-form media, you know, instead of a, a reel on Instagram or a short on YouTube. Not that those things don't have benefits, you know. I'm not, I'm not an old head that's going to tell you how you should be entertained but that's how it started gang you know you're driving into work and this guy's saying hey you got to see this fucking movie and then you get home from work and you watch that fucking movie (laughs) that's all it was but anyway so i've been sitting on this for quite a while okay this one came out uh yeah a year and some change ago and i had briefly I'm going to say briefly, I don't want to pretend that I'm the man's friend or that we interact all the time. We don't. But I briefly touched base with the writer-director, and he was interested in coming on the show. But the fact of the matter is, he's in too high demand, which makes me, I, I fuck, most people, especially how fucking selfish we are these days, most people would be like, oh, fuck him. I'm not going to talk about his shit because he said he was going to come on the show, and then he didn't. No, 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 no. The fact that he is, he's got four things in production right now, one of which being the Stray Dogs, which I can't fucking wait for. I, if, if someone who I think we should be talking about more is exploding with their work, I, what, what do I have to get mad about? I, I, conversely, I get excited. I get to see this, you know, man rise and, and I, He's one of my favorites working today. And for those of you that listen to the show, you know I don't say that, you know, just flippantly. I don't just throw that out there. When I say this writer-director is easily one of my favorites working today because he's making films that I want to see and he's doing them in a way that I want to see it. You know I don't just fucking blow smoke like that unless I have someone that I'm interviewing on and if I get someone in, you know, that we're doing video this, that, or the other thing, yeah, come on, I'm not going to fuck. You guys know I don't fucking, I don't pull any punches and I, I, you know, I'm maybe too honest for my own good as my chick tells me. Sometimes I should lie is what she says. But anyway, so I've been sitting on this one for a while. Um, An interview with the writer-director never really materialized, which is fine because his plate is full, and I really hope that he explodes because he's, I I say again, one of my favorites working today. He has made two films that are amongst my favorites in the past decade, and I'm qualified to say that. You know why? Because I watch more shit than you. (laughs) So... The fact that he has not one but two of my favorite films in the last decade. Not easy to do, gang. Not easy to do. Anyway, as you see on your screen, your dial... I don't know what the hell just happened right there. Sorry. As you see on your screen, your dial, however you are choosing to join me today, I guess I appreciate you. I don't know. Like I said, I go back and forth. On the one hand, eh... (laughs) 
<laughs> on the other hand, I do appreciate the love, and I want to continue, uh, you know, showing my love back by continuing to do these little shows and talk about stuff that you may not have heard of or that you may hear- have heard of, and you just want to hear my take. So at least for the interim... I'll be here for you guys for a little bit, all right? Anyway, as you see on your screen, your dial, however you're choosing to join us today, I appreciate you. The big four, the big four, four retired assassins spring back into action when they cross paths with a straight arrow cop who is determined to track down an elusive murderer with good fucking reason she has to track down that elusive murderer. I tell you what, because... Uh, if it happened to me, I'm going ape shit. So who is in the big four? We got Abimana Arya Satya. Oh, Ar- <laughs> this is why he didn't come on the show because he knows if he's listened to any of my shows before, he knows I can't pronounce shit because I'm just a dumb fuck American. But conversely from other Americans, I do try. <laughs> Topan is played by Topan is played by Abimana Arya Satya. Arya Satya fucking killed it. <laughs> Uh, Putri Marino, Lutetia, Ari Kriting, uh, Christo Emmanuel, Martino Leo, who fucking, well, all the, everyone involved in this film, just from the cast and the crew, blew my fucking wig back. And I, I'm actually kind of shocked. It's, it's very rare when you see an action film um, and I think the people involved with agreed. It doesn't matter where, what country the uh, uh, action film originates from. It's hard to have everything click like it does here. It's very hard to do, and especially some of the things that our writer director is trying to accomplish. Not easy to do it cohesively. Okay. Anyway, back to uh, the cast. Martino Leo plays Sorrento. We got Michelle Tahalia. And we got, who else we got? We got Co Michael. We got uh, Hamana Hamana Hamana. Uh, we got uh, Booty Rose. Buddy Rose. Buddy Ross. Booty Rose. Fuck, I'm going to get some angry DMs. Learn how to fucking. <laughs> Learn how to fucking say the names or don't do the fucking show. Hey, fuck you. I'm trying. Okay. Um, Donnie Damara is also in it. Uh, choreography by Trisna Irwan and Ricky Saldin. Edited by Dinda Amanda. Uh, great cinematography, photography work by Batahara Gumpar. Batara Gumpar. I think I fucked up the first one. Anyway. And which brings us to our writer direct. This is why he didn't come on, is because I don't know how to fucking say names. Uh, and written and uh, written by Timo Tayanto and Joanna Watamina, and directed by the man Timo Tayanto. I'm not kidding you, gang. He continues to do movies that I want to see in a way that I want to see it. Uh, maybe you saw his segments on VHS two or VHS ninety four, or if. You're a part of the Shutter Gang. May the devil take you. May the devil take you too. And like I said, two of my favorite films in the past decade, one of which being The Night Comes for Us and The Big Four. Um, anyway, back to the doing an action comedy, which is what this is, an action comedy. Doing that as well as this man did. You know what? I shouldn't. I'm sure Timo, humble guy, would be like, stop saying my fucking name. Everybody involved fucking killed it on this one, Sean. Stop saying, okay, fair enough. So I, very rarely can you make an action comedy work. I think one of two things ends up happening um, within the script or within you know the viewing of the film. Either the action you know, leaves a little bit more to be desired and doesn't hit like you want it to, or the comedy doesn't. You know, I, I struggle to think of... Um, you know, a handful of action comedy films with heart. That's that's my biggest draw for this one is the heart involved in it. It's and it being a foreign film. Uh, you know, for all you fucking mouth breathing Americas, uh, Americans, it's it's a foreign film. And and I and I've heard a lot of people uh, DM me and say, you know, like some of the stuff that I recommend. Um, 
their there, and I just mean you know the foreign market. Their comedy doesn't translate as well um, to the states, and in some instances, that's true. I mean, I, I guess what I would my my rebuttal to that always is the same thing: watch more foreign shit. It's that simple, you know. All of you shouldn't have fucking became foreign film fans after fucking Parasite. Good film, great film. It's just. I, I I was so nauseated by the fucking some of you sellouts that were like, oh, I saw a parasite and I just I just decided to go down the rabbit hole, man. Shut the fuck up. That's so disrespectful. <laughs> That's so disrespectful to all of us that have been watching movies from other countries for years and years, a decades. But I, I guess I I shouldn't be so negative. I should be happy that you're finally getting out there, finally getting out there. And, uh, you know, seeing just how much good shit is out there, you know, like all the jokes in this one hit. If we're talking the comedy for me, it was it was bonkers. It was outlandish and it plays well instead of, you know, maybe you could make the argument. Some of the uh, earlier Shaw brother films that attempt humor. I'm talking, you know, 70s, uh, early 80s. Okay, maybe some of those jokes didn't work for you. I still find them funny because if you watch enough, uh, you start to get it. You start to get it, right? Anyway, so with this film, like I said, I've been, I've been wanting to talk about it a very long time, and we're going to just do my typical spoiler-free review. Um, I was going to get into it with Timo Tayanto. Uh, if he had come on the show, I was going to pick it apart just a little bit more. And by pick it apart, I mean just kind of do a, a little bit more of a deep dive than you guys are accustomed to having me do. But... With him not being on here, I can. I, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to try to sell you on my passion because that's you know I I don't I don't think you guys understand what it takes for me to sit down and do one of these shows. It better be good. I'm not. I'm no longer under any obligation by Arrow or Wellgo USA or MVD Rewind um, like I was uh, you know a couple years ago and it's oh my gosh all I need all I can tell you about that is it is nice not having fucking 25 blu-rays show up on my doorstep you know to which that's that's work gang <laughs> it's work I don't especially like when you, you you talk about some of the uh, double disc triple disc you know whatever that you know scream factory would send me whatever the case may be do you have any idea how long it takes to go through which one did I get the other day that I'm gonna do um, have you guys ever heard of millionaire Express no of course not because you're a bunch of fucking mouth breathers but Sam Ohung uh, there's four versions of that film. On the Arrow release. Four. And I'm not the type of person that's going to come on the show go, love that shit, and then just fucking cut the mic. I have to watch all four versions of that. I have to watch the comment, or I have to listen to the commentaries. I have to watch the making of featurettes, the bo- all the bonus features. So it is nice <laughs> that 25, you know, discs every month aren't showing up on my doorstep. Uh, you know, because then it, it it allows me to do more of what I'm interested in doing. Not that I'm look, I love Arrow. I do. I still buy physical media. I'm never gonna fucking stop until I just can't buy physical media anymore which unfortunately it seems like we're trending in that direction you know i don't know if you guys read the news best buy uh early or i want to say late last year announced that they're not going to be doing um any movie releases in store or online anymore and i you know well one i've moved quite a few times in my life and let me tell you 2,000 blu-rays to haul to a new fucking dwelling Every time I decide to move, it's not fucking fun. In fact, it's become the bane of my existence. Anyway, I digress. I don't have to do that shit anymore. I tapped out. I told them, hey, uh, when, when I feel like doing some of your releases, I will reach out to you, which allows me to do stuff like this, the big four, which is he- huge on Netflix. It was huge on Netflix, and you can still watch it on Netflix right now. In fact, what was I reading? Uh, according to Variety, the Big Four was the second most watched non-English language title on Netflix in its first weekend, making it in the top ten in fifty-three. I say again, making the top ten in fifty-three countries. I, 
well, now I'm kind of regretting doing the show. If it made it the top 10 of 53 countries, you don't need me. Just like I say about Marvel, they got people for that. They got people for that. Anyway, the horror comedy, uh, not horror comedy, the action comedy in this, the action works. And I want to tell you another thing. What I love that Timo does, uh, more so than, say, like American directors, it's a lot of hand-to-hand combat. The cinematography, uh, I'm sorry, the DP in this, uh, Batara Gumpar, Gumpar, god damn it. I'm gonna be, I'm going to be fired from my own show, and I should. There is a way to do action sequences these days <laughs> to, to make it appealing for me. I don't – I want to see the hand-to-hand stuff. I cannot deal with another fuck – you know what? I'll say this. 90% of the time, car chases these days bore me. Car chases in films, they bore the fuck – they bore the fuck out of me. Uh, you know, I can only see so many explosions, especially – depending on what it is. Well, Sean, there's explosions in the big four. Yeah, but when you see it, there's an element of humor to it. Not all the time, but there's still an element of humor to it. We don't usually do that with movies in the States here. When, tell me the five to ten best action comedies you've seen in the last ten years. Go ahead, I'll wait. That is not to say that they don't exist. I'm not saying that. But one that works as well as this one? I don't think so. I don't fucking think so. You know, uh, a film in this film from Indonesia blows 95%, if not more, uh, of American action films out of the water. Uh, in terms of not, you know, I, I got to stop saying action because the fact of the matter, it's just a good movie. It's a good story. And I hope that, uh, and he probably will because he's, he's, huge now like i said four things in production stray dogs gonna hit us in the mouth soon i hope that we can continue this franchise i really do the characters are so likable and even the villains the villains blew me away martino fucking i from the moment i saw that dude on screen i was just like holy fuck this dude is fucking killing it. And that goes for everyone. Be it, you know, some of the comedic uh, comedic moments with um, uh, Putri Marino. Uh, some of the very, you know, heart-wrenching moments. Putri Marino. That's another thing you don't see in a lot of action films these days. Is the level of care that I have for these characters. I don't very rarely... Listen, Mission Impossible is sweet. You know, the last couple were sweet. I don't know that I... In fact, I can just go on record and say right now, I don't care about the characters like I do in this one. Yes, of course, Simon Pegg and Ving Rhames. Listen, listen. I like them. I do. But in terms of, like, how bummed out I would be if, let's say, one of the characters met their demise. Eh, I think I might be more inclined to be more upset um, if one of the characters, maybe they do, maybe they won't, I'm not spoiling anything, meet their demise in the big four. Okay? And I, I struggle every day to understand how we aren't bringing these filmmakers, bringing these actors and actresses um, and incorporating um, into our films. Not that they can't have their own thing, but so what I want to see is I want Timo Tayanto to become a household name in America. And for a lot of the whore f- the crowd, which I think is the most toxic fucking fan base on the planet, which is the whore crowd, the whore crowd is aware of Timo, but I... I think I want him to be recognized as just a fucking goddamn good filmmaker, whether it's horror, comedy, action, whatever. Like, if you've seen um, all of Timo's films, he separates himself from the pack. And and I and I mean all writer directors. I don't just mean you know oh from the foreign market. He subs. That's no no <laughs> not at all. I think like I I want him to be a household name here. And you know the, even Abhimana Arya Satya. I he his comedic timing, his his athleticism as an action film. I'm sorry, Tom Cruise isn't all that funny all the time. Whereas Abimana, I was laughing throughout. Lutetia, 
killing it, laughing throughout. Christo Emmanuel laughing throughout. Even Martino Leo's character and uh, Michelle Tahalia, uh, both great, d- d- fucking terrifying, and yet you're giggling along with them. Like, it is a weird thing when, you know, let's say, uh, I'm not going to spoil anything, but let's just hypothetically say that a villain were to meet their demise. I was fucking bummed. Do you know how rare that is? <laughs> Like, do you know how rare it is when, like, most of the time when a villain dies, I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. They fucking shouldn't have done that shit. So now you're now you're dead because of it. I, uh, gang, I watch more than you do, and I don't see it that often. I really don't. And I think the Big Four is a franchise that can stand the test of time. I really, really do. Like, I don't... I. Again, I don't say it flippantly, you know, I don't, it's not a throwaway for me to be loved. I think all of you know, I don't give a fuck if you like the show or not. I really don't. I do it for the love of cinema because I still think movies need to be cherished. I do. I I don't understand this, this obsession with why would I watch a movie when I can watch fucking 29 TikToks that give me a whole range of emotions? First and foremost, I don't think the brain was meant to experience 72 emotions in 15 in 15 minutes. I don't think it's good. Okay. But, and here's the thing, like, if you're one of those people that you need, you know, like, bright flashing lights and, and you know, quick cuts, well, this one's got it. Well, Sean, it's two hours and 21 minutes. That's the big... Big, uh, you know, at least if you look at uh, some of the critics and what they have to say about it, they they say that it's too long. Fuck you. This movie could have been two and a half more hours. It's actually, I think the runtime's two hours and 21 minutes. But it could have been two more hours, and I would have been there every step of the way. Like, whether it's feeling the impact um, with some of the um, things that our characters go through. It hits hard. It hits hard, gang. It's not, you know, and I think I read somewhere else, you know, like, oh, we're, we're kind of using tropes that have been tried and true. Do you hear yourself? They're tried and true. I've, I've about had it with this whole idea that every fucking film needs to be so fucking original. Like, you can't, as filmmakers, we draw from the greats. I, I, I read something like, it's like Tarantino meets Three Stooges. I... I kind of want to get out of the habit of saying something is Tarantino-esque. It's, I, listen, I understand that it is a compliment. I do. But on a certain level, I think it kind of, I don't know, disrespects the people who did it. You know, like, unless, unless you can blatantly tell that it is a complete ripoff, all right, that's one thing. But. When I started reading more and more about what other people have to say, which I don't normally do before a show, but I, I'm I'm just I'm always curious, gang. I'm always curious. I think it's disrespecto to Timo and his team to say, "Oh, it's Tarantino meets the Three Stooges." No, it's Timo meets comedy. <laughs> That's what it is to me. It's it's the cast meets a very unique, very original script that you know, you could say goes off the rails in the best of ways. I want that given what it is, you know, I, it's, it's, it's goofy in the best of ways. And you, I think above all else, you, you know, what, what is a glaring thing to me, a, a glaring reality of this film to me, Timo just loves fucking film. And anybody who loves film the way that he does, anybody, it doesn't, it not, it's not just him. Anybody who loves film as much as he does, I, I'm going to be a fan or I'm going to be your friend. One of the two. <laughs> like, and maybe it's not good in my personal life that I, uh, I, I, so I do this thing. This is a true story. I do this thing where like, I'll ask people something like that, that maybe I just met them or I'm aware of them, just starting to talk to them, whatever the case may be. And it, depending on some of the films that you say are your favorite, like, I will judge you. <laughs> I will judge you. So, uh, and it's it's fun for me as a, I. 
I am not going to say that I'm a critic. I hate that. I hate the idea of, excuse me, got a little upchuck there going on. Felt like uh, <laughs> there's a beginning scene where uh, one of the characters asks another character if he's all right. And, and it's one in the opening sequence, what happens, I laughed out loud, but I had a little upchuck there. Anyway, uh, it's, I almost used your love of film. <laughs> As a bar on whether or not I'm going to like you. Maybe that makes me shallow. I don't think it does, but maybe it does. And, and, and like, if you tell me, you know, you're a 35 year old man and you only watch Pixar films, you know, I had somebody the other day, like, I was just kind of picking his brain because he actually had some insightful shit to say, uh, given the topic that we were talking about. But I, I soon realized that he only watches cartoons and uh, drama. <laughs> I was like, all right, I've had about enough of listening to this fucking guy. Because, <laughs> like, to me, you can't call yourself a fan. You can't call yourself a connoisseur unless you try to experience everything. You know, I, I, I tell people at my job all the time, I can watch a fucking, you know, blockbuster action film at noon and then follow it with a French drama from the 60s right after. I just, you got to be willing though, gang. Don't always watch shit that makes you comfortable. Even though I think this film, this this film should be like comfort food to some of you. I really believe that. Um, I, I, I can't tell you how many times you want to like comfort film for me or comfort food for me. Comfort film, comfort food. Doesn't matter. This one I have put on, I don't know, no less than probably eight times since it's been released. Um, I'm looking over some of the, uh, critics right now, despite somewhat an, a somewhat overlong duration, the big four emerges as a highly entertaining. Stop saying that. You're going to say the big four emerges as a highly entertaining movie and definitely one of the best action films of the year, but you're going to put in the little dig that it's over long duration. We don't need 80 minute action films. Uh, I know this is kind of off topic, but you want to know what I hate now in music? I find these songs that I fucking love and most of them are like two, two and a half minutes. I hate that. (laughs) I'm, I'm thankful for the art. I'm thankful for the perspective, but Long form media, baby. Long form media. I just movies until they put me in the ground. If it's nine hours long, but it's entertaining, I'm there every step of the way. I'll piss in my fucking popcorn bucket. I do not give a shit. All right. Anyway, did I hopefully sell you a little bit? (laughs) You should go see this film. Not that it needs my help, I guess, because I don't read too much about films. I just I like having my own thoughts and not kind of being. Uh, uh, swayed in in one way or another. It's it was in the top ten list in fifty three countries. I didn't realize that before I started the show. Perhaps you know, looking back on it, Timo doesn't need my help. If he was top ten in fifty three countries, fuck, I'm just wasting thirty minutes. <laughs> You know, I could have just posted to my story and been like, hey, watch this film. And then the the people that like me would have and then the people that hate me would have been like, fuck you. We're not taking another uh, another uh, recommendation from you because you always do weird films. You, you don't do stuff that we've heard of, stuff that's safe, stuff that, you know, I'm aware of. I, I kid you not. I had no less than 15, 20 people ask me why I didn't talk about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. (laughs) I was just like, because you don't need me to. (laughs) You you don't, you know, uh, there's there's, there's people for that. I'd rather talk about the big four, which I like the big four more than I liked Dead Reckoning. And the big four probably had half the money. So that's another thing that Timo excels on. Uh is making the most out of each and every shot. Like, he rarely misses in a scene. In a scene! I'm not even talking about the film. In a scene! I just, I love the tone of his films. I I love the way that it moves, you know? Execution is everything, baby. You know, like, I I don't think that a film is good based on one person. 
It takes everybody being, you know, like, it, for instance, so this is kind of, this film has wacky comedic moments, right? But I've also told you that it had heart. You don't get that execution and you don't get the, you know, what we saw if everybody wasn't all in on this fucking script. Like sometimes, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to bash any films, but sometimes you can tell when an actor is out of it or you can tell when a cinematographer gave up midway through a scene and like some parts were really fucking awesome and then it's like, ooh, what did, what did happen here? Not the case in the big four. Not the case at all. So, please, show this, flood this guy's DMs. No, don't do that. Don't do, you know what? I would feel bad if, <laughs> don't, don't flood this guy's DMs. But please, go watch the big four. Go watch everybody that I have mentioned in this podcast. Go watch their films, okay? I can, I can almost assure you, 95% of you that listen to this show, and if you haven't seen um, this film, you, you're going to love it because if, if, if you're a fan of me, there's no way that you can't be a fan of the big four, that you can't be a fan of may the devil take you. The night comes for us. You know how many people I've recommended the night comes for us and fucking just <laughs> bro. That was the craziest fucking movie. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was so awesome. Wasn't it? So why would this be any different? You know? Uh, if you're interested to hear my take on The Night Comes For Us, uh, one of my very early episodes, fuck, this might have been like three years ago, I had the villain played by Sonny Pang on, which that was a, a, a good chat. And so if you're interested in my take on The Night Comes For Us, that episode does exist in the ether, gang. All right. You think I like this movie? I'd say that's pretty fucking evident. So, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> it would have been great to have Timo on, but I, like I said, I'm, I'm happy that that man is in high demand. So happy. That means that I keep getting to watch his shit, man. And that's awesome. Fuck. Ellis Cinema. The Big Four on Netflix now. No excuses. Ellis Cinema, The Big Four. We gone.